Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning Inter Interactive Fiction with Twine in Sugarcube. This episode is going to be a somewhat smaller one than the previous one, and then smaller than future episodes as well, because we're going to be covering some of the formatting options that are available to you in Sugarcube. I covered some of the formatting options in the Harlow series somewhat later in the series, and I think in retrospect that may have put you at a disadvantage because you may have been writing out passages and you may have just wanted to know exactly how to underline, how to bold, or do anything like that. So we're going to cover it in this episode just so that you can have that under your belt before we start diving in into the deeper stuff. So here we have depth charge open. This is from where we last left off. As you can see, we have three passages open and I'm just going to open up the brig passage right here. So this is the brig, brig bangs you from the shockwaves of the brig bangs from the shockwave of a tremendous explosion. You tumble out of your cot and onto the cold damp floor. Twine at its heart is a text parser. It goes through and will analyze your text and then format the story based on any code that you provided into the story. And each Twine basically delegates that to each of the story formats. So a story format such as Harlow is going to interpret your text and your code differently from a story format such as Sugarcube. Now this 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 series is focused entirely on Sugarcube, so the the techniques and things we're working with won't work in another story format. So I just wanted to bring that up again just to keep that in mind. Now oftentimes when you're working with a story, you're going to be working with lots of passages, you're going to be working with lots of paragraphs, and you're going to have code sort of being intermixed in between all of them. And as you recall, as you hit enter, it's going to create carriage returns in your actual story. So here we can just put this space for blank like so. And this will, this sentence will appear this many three spaces down, or shall I say three carriage returns down from the past paragraph. This may not be exactly what you want. Oftentimes you may have a lot of code occurring in this area right here, and you don't want this to be, be returned down three spaces. You'd rather have this say at the very end like this. Well, Sugarcube allows you to do this very easily, and it gives you a couple options. So let's imagine we're down here, and let's just say we have a bunch of code. We'll just write a bunch of code. <laughs> and we'll just copy this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we have a bunch of code, and we want this bunch of code to run, and we want to add some space so we can actually see what the code does. Well, what we can do is we can add the backslash. And here's how it would work. You, you're going to put a backslash on every line that you don't want to be rendered as a carriage return. So here I'm going to put one here. I'm going to, whoops, we're going to put one here, and we're going to do it like this. Now I'm gonna now I'm going to play my story. And here you can see you tumble out of your cot damp floor. You you tumble on your cop on the cold damp floor, a bunch of code, a bunch of code, a bunch of code, the space for blank. And this is all being put onto one line, which is exactly as you would want it to do. This is so much nicer than working with previously when working with Harlow, you may have seen that I had a whole bunch of text condensed onto one line. So we could have the sentences come right after each other. And oftentimes that code looked almost indistinguishable or it just looked like a mess. What we call that in computer programming, we call that spaghetti code. And it was really hard to read. Well, doing this makes your code a little bit easier to understand, but there's even an easier way to do that. Here we'll go up here and we're gonna delete all these backsla backslashes. And now I'm going to add a custom tag. I'm going to do these two, two less than signs, and then I'm going to put no, N-O-B-R, and then I'm going to put two greater than signs like that. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing, except now I'm going to put a forward slash, and then I'm going to put a no BR. Okay, this may seem a little bit weird. Just hang on. It'll make sense in just a moment. So here we have, a, we have an opening no BR tag, and we have a closing no BR tag going to close this and now we're going to play our game and you can see we have the same exact effect well i shouldn't really call it a tag it's actually a macro and one of the awesome things about sugarcube is you can make your own macros in it 
macros start off the same way. They always have these, these less than signs and then what the name of the macro, then the close signs. In this case, we're using no BR. In HTML, if you wanted to add a carriage return, you would put a statement like a tag like this, which is called BR, which is a breaking space. Thus, by calling it no BR, what Sugarcube is saying is no breaking spaces at all. In fact, it's going to put no breaking spaces until you provide a closing macro. In this case, we have the forward slash. This indicates that this is the end of this. Here, let's get rid of this no BR and let's see what happens. And here we have error cannot find a closing for the tag for the macro and the macro doesn't render. So that's a very useful that's a very useful macro. So just keep it in mind that keep it in mind as you're working with Twine in the future because you're going to want to use that. A lot of questions I got in my last series on Twine were all about spacing, and that's why it's really important for you to keep that in mind. Okay, let's dive into some basic formatting options. The first thing you may want to do is bold something, and an easy way to do that is to use apostrophes. And you use two apostrophes. You, this is the start of the bold, bold, and here at the end of the floor, I'm going to end my bold like that. Now I'll close this and we'll run, and you can see we have bolding right here. If you want to emphasize something, say, such as to italicize it, you would use forward slash. You would use two forward slash like that, and another two forward slash like there. Now this will make shockwave into italics. We'll play, and you can see shockwave is italicized. We can also underline as well, and this is by using the underscore characters like this, and this time we're gonna underline and italicize shockwave. And there you go. Strike throughs are made by using the equal sign. We'll say no, I just made it up. And no, I don't want that, so what I'll do is add equal signs, two equal signs on the left side of my the text and two equal signs on the right side. We'll close this and we'll run it now and you can see we have our strike through. If you want to add some superscripts, you can do that as well. And if you want to add a superscript, you can then use just these caret symbols and then you could put Wikipedia article like that. Or in this case, we'll say, maybe we'll just use a number like this to indicate the source that I was quoting. Now we'll play this and you can see we have our one is right above that article or right above that, that date. If you want to use subscripts, you'd use this wavy character. This is right next to my one on my Mac. I, I, I believe it's the tilde, that's correct. The tilde character, like so. And now I will play it and you can see now we have a subscript. There may be times when you want to provide code inside your story. For instance, you want to format that. This would go traditionally in an HTML code tag. And I'll put it inside here. Let's just say I'm just, actually, I don't want to do that. Put it inside here and then I'll put my code goes here. I don't really see there being much use of this inside of your Twine story, but who knows, you may need it. And if so, it's there for you to use. You can see it's formatted like so. Now this is described as code being in line, being in line of a sentence. If you need to provide a block of code, you do something like this.
This is just some pseudo language. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Could be a little JavaScript, could be a little Swift. Here you go. If a dollar sign equals hello, then print hi. Now, if for whatever reason, you needed to use a dash that is combined, otherwise known as an EM dash. Just put two dashes like that together. And let's see that out. Check that out and you'll see it's now one. Now there's gonna be times where you don't want anything marked up at all. Say for instance, you're using this dash and you want to show two dashes instead of using the EM dash. To do this, you would put it within quotes three times like so. And now we play. And here I have my two dashes. If any of this is confusing, don't worry about it. I've, I will provide a link to the documentation inside for the Sugarcube docs. So just look in the description of this video, click on it, and you may want to bookmark it because as you're working through Sugarcube, you may want to have that open as well. Finally, if you want to use HTML, you can use HTML just as well. So here we have our shockwave. Let's make this bold and we can just use this using the B tag. And this will be rendered in bold like so. And there we have shockwave is bolded. Again, it's really your preference and exactly what you want to do with your story and how you want it to be written in a way that you can understand. Well, as you can see, that was a real quick video. In the next video, we're going to be diving deep into Sugarcube and start going into how you can work with variables. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next episode. See you then.